Hello and welcome to another episode. This episode is a slightly different format, a different way of thinking, and it's a prototype where I'm meeting with Joshua Natal and we're discussing a different way of thinking when it comes to reverse mentorship and the way how you can provide value between uh, people and re re-engineer a bit the relationship angle of different generations. So that's a special episode, which is a, a test and a prototype. If you like it, if you don't like it, please comment and give me your opinion. We are looking into providing at, as, as much as possible value to you. So please like it, please please let me know if it's it's nothing you like and, and then we take it from there. Thank you very much and enjoy the show. Hello, Joshua. It's exciting to do another prototype test again. <laughs> yeah, prototyping. I think um, Jens, when I first met you towards the middle of 2020, um, one of the biggest things that you told me is you like to prototype, move quickly, test, fail, and learn things. Um, and so this is another one of this is another one of those scenarios, I guess. Let's see how how that will end up, and if people are listening to it or not. But we we will see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see, and maybe maybe I also need to um, get better with my uh, my podcasting tools. I see you looking rather professional there, um, and I'm uh, I don't have the the background behind me like you have. You you um, you're putting me to shame. Yeah, no, you, you're you're good enough. <laughs> it's it's just a little investment to make the vo uh, voice sound better. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose you are um, you're becoming quite the content machine, um, and so yeah, you have to have the right tools to help you to make the best content possible. Yeah, I was I was digging a bit into podcasting last year, and then I was looking what is the most important thing, and it's it's the audio. So if you don't have proper audio, people will not listen to your podcast. So, and I said, okay, what is the cheapest microphone you can buy? And when I was digging into it and I didn't end up buying the cheapest, but finding a way of having good value for money. And that's what I'd stick to. <laughs> and it worked yeah, well, so far. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it definitely works. And you produce some great conversations and engagement so far. And uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've really enjoyed uh seeing your your show grow um, and your community and the different types of learnings that are out there. So maybe to, to kick things off, Jens, today, is, uh, today we're going to be chatting about the XYZ Playground. Yes. Um, and, you know, one of the things is when you're building out a, a brand, a business, it's important to bring people along for the journey. Um, and so we're going to wind back the clock a bit and I'm going to ask Jens to kick things off is, what is the backstory of the XYZ Playground? Uh, maybe you can just tell us a bit about it. Tell us what got your head thinking about reverse mentorship. Um, and I think that's a good place to start. Yeah. So, of course, it didn't. The, the name wasn't ex existing when I was thinking about that. I was I was digging into different ways of engaging with leaders around the world and how do we how how do we basically build future businesses in a, in a better way that are not just focused on printing money that are focused on creating value so i was basically over the last year already discussing with a lot of people what are the different ways and how can we how can we help young professionals in growing because that's one of my passions which i'm doing since years already helping young people to grow and helping young people to develop so i was uh just through discussions, I was mentioning this reverse mentorship um, here and there, and and basically everyone who was involved into what I, what I was saying and, and was engaging with me was positive about that. And then I was thinking like, hey, that 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 need to be somewhere. And then I was just googling it, and it's like, hey, it's not too much. There there's not too much going on. And then. I basically just in, in the prototyping style, like we do this year, I just posted on LinkedIn and Facebook, hey, I'm starting a new initiative. Who is interesting to jump on a call with me uh, looking for young entrepreneurs between 20 and 30. Um, and I got basically within 24 hours, more than 20 response to my, to my initial post. Um, then I met over, I think it was two weeks with 
everyone who who came back to me and and discussed like like we did like hey what is my way of thinking about that because my idea was looking into reverse mentorship and looking into connecting um young minds with experienced minds and helping each other so that was the initial idea and then the the second part of that was how 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 to help young professionals and young entrepreneurs doing something together and building a business around that. So it was these two two worlds which I wanted to merge, and that was basically then we ended up um, in having I think in in the beginning it was ten people who wanted to join and then started the journey, and then we lost a couple of people due to passion and uh, other work. Um, needs they they had um on the way but that was it it's kind of kind of that's how it works when you do when you start a prototype it will never end in the way that you think it will and yeah that's that's a bit to the background story so that's basically how we started and we 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 just started with with a zoom call and introducing each other (laughs) yeah no, no, I think it's fascinating. And Jens, thanks for sharing that background. And one of the things that I've certainly enjoyed in the project so far and, and the business that it is becoming is the diversity. Um, and I think, you know, especially in the time of, of COVID that we're all experiencing at the moment is how, how do you foster connections and how do you have the ability to connect with people right around the world? Um, and Jens, referred, you referred to, you know, literally reaching out to some of your connections more broadly around the world. And obviously that talks to your experience and network that you have. But, you know, to bring together 10 different individuals, different backgrounds, operating in different countries with different languages, different ages, genders, et cetera. That's certainly a richness that I've uh, enjoyed, like I've said, enjoyed so far. And I think will add an, a tremendous amount of value in terms of the way that we approach problems um, and the solutions that we look to provide as well. Yeah, and that was that was for me part of the selection process. So when, when I first of all, it need to be a, a a way of thinking that that connects like like we connected. It was the same with the others who are who are now in in the team as well. The the second part was really understanding the cultural backgrounds, uh, understanding the stories of the people and how this story can help. Uh, a, divi- a diverse group to to be better and, and it's like putting different people with different backgrounds together is something I've done over the past so I was really deconstructing that and looking into how 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 could we put a team together that fits together and and enriches each other from a different culture background from different ways of thinking from different ways of understanding how business works and the world works that's that's why I did this interview sessions because for me it was important to get the first understanding of your view and the others' views as well to get a feeling of what could fit and what 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 is not fitting. Hmm. Yeah, and that's a fascinating point and something that's just popped into my head. And and um, those who are watching may know that Jens runs a, a 25 day innovation challenge. Um, and you know, it's a shameless plug here, but one of the things that he, he spoke about, I can't remember which day it was, I think it was maybe day 13 of 25, where he spoke about listening um, and he broke down the different types of listening. And I mean, it must've been a fascinating process for you, Jens, um, in terms of you know listening to people's different stories, where they are in their lives, um, and then trying to marry different values together to create, yeah, like I've mentioned, a diverse team of individuals who have never met in person as well, which is quite remarkable. Yeah, and and, and to that point, what, what I was inspired by the way of thinking and leading from, from the more holacracy approach, which is like working with individuals and teams where you don't have a hierarchy structure. And that's, I mean, you have seen that, how we set that up. I have set up the whole thing that I'm not in charge. Um, so I'm of course the establisher of that group and the, the first initiator, but I'm not the the let's say the CEO of that group. It's 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 more about how how do we help each other to to be successful, and that's 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 also something I wanted to prototype because I was inspired by um, the the CEO of IKEA Centers, Gerhard, who who was looking into that. I think it's like five years back, and and we discussed a lot of these topics. And I said. Hey, I will I will try this uh, in in a setting which is basically perfect for this because it's future oriented. It's 
it's young minds and 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 experts around certain topics and how can we utilize this way of thinking and this way of leadership into something which is not really existing in that way that was yeah. that was part of the or is part of the prototype as well <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is part of the prototype and i think you know that's again one of the beauties of of the space that we're playing in is that we're allowing ourselves to approach things in with that mindset which is is extremely beneficial especially in the digital world that we operate in mm. um so yeah, and maybe Jens to to sort of transition into the next sort of discussion point that we've got down for our prototyping session for this first uh, first conversation today is you know what what is the X Y Z playground? Um, and I mean you've referred to it uh, before in terms of the way that it was constructed. Um, and I thought we could maybe just spend a couple of a, a couple of minutes chatting about you know how the X Y Z playground facilitates and provides a space utilizing a reverse mentorship model to help businesses um, with some of the challenges that they're facing. Yeah. For, for me, it's the, the first thing that, that pops into my mind while thinking about what is XYZ Playground, because um, may, maybe for those who have never heard about XYZ Playground, first you should Google it and, and, and find us. Um, it's xyzplayground.com, uh, not Playground XYZ, that's another company. Uh, they do other stuff. So xyzplayground.com. Um, but it's from a name perspective, I think uh, what you guys came up with is like, how do we connect generation X, Y, and Z and, and creating a playground for them? And I think you can describe that after way, way better than I do. But for me, as a little bit of outsider who is supporting you guys, it's like, it's a way of thinking. It's a way of behaving. And I think that's the most powerful part of it because it it's not a, a, a structure that's rigid and always the same. It's more a way of thinking, a framework, understanding of how, how do you engage between humans who have different perspectives. And that can be, if we look into reverse mentorship, is it can be a very, very experienced person, let's say, um, a manager in in a corporation and a young uh, a group of young minds who are, who are not in a management position but who have different perspectives of the world of specific topics, different experiences from their life, who help this 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 manager to think differently, think out of the box, uh, like like you always say in corporate worlds, it's like think differently, and I think that's that's the most powerful part of it, where just this engagement will unleash so many things in organizations, in leaders themselves, and on both ways. It's like the young uh, minds will think different, learn uh, while doing this, and the same way the experienced leaders and managers will understand things differently and will learn, and the business will grow through through doing that. That's that's at least in a nutshell for me. But what what, what does it mean for you? How How would you describe it? Yeah, so maybe just before jumping onto the the explanation of it, I loved what you said there about thinking outside of the box, and it got me it got me thinking about how we're positioning and framing the the X Y Z playground. And something where I want to just flip it on its head quickly is saying we're not asking you to think out of the box; we're asking you to come and think in our playground. Um, and I think that that's a, it's a great concept because playground is uh, it's it's what you make of it, and we're developing this concept around exper an experimental playground. And I think that uh, over the coming weeks and months, we'll definitely explore that with you. But that's just something that I just wanted to shoot in inside of that because um, it's like I said, just something that popped into my head. But yes, from a definition and a, an, an explanation perspective of what is the XYZ playground, um, just linking onto a few points that, that Jens mentioned. Um, so firstly, starting with reverse mentorship and how that aligned, aligns to our vision from an overall business and a collective perspective. So we've in, in short, we've got a vision to create a space where the leaders of today can learn from the leaders of tomorrow. Um, and that's utilizing a reverse mentorship model. So for those who might not have heard of what reverse mentorship is, it's essentially creating a space and an environment where younger thinkers can use some of their models and their learnings to inform the decisions that the older generation and established leaders are taking. Um, and it's a movement that's been around for a couple of years, but in, if you've been following some of the developments in Silicon Valley and the tech centers of the world, 
It's mm. spaces that are starting to explore how those models can be used more effectively um, and things like that. So it's using a reverse mental model, but it's not only using a reverse mental model. And I'll get onto why that is in terms of uh, people in the, it, it, at, at its center. So Jens, what you mentioned around also, you know, people creating ideas and sharing ideas. I think that that's what the experimental pl- or the X, uh, the XYZ playground rather is looking to explore mm-hmm. is how do we connect with people and create personalized offerings inside of that space, which I think is very important. So we're coming to you with a framework and a canvas per se that uh, we're saying this is some of the tools and thinking that we've utilized, but we're developing a very specific uh, model and uh, playground to help you solve your certain needs. So it's very tailored, very personalized, and not you know a one size fits all um, analogy um, or offering that we're looking to create. We we're really focusing on creating it specifically to solve your needs, whether you be a business, an entrepreneur, an organization, um, and things like that. And then you know maybe to round it off is. The XYZ playground is is a it's it's almost like and I'll use the word prototyping here, Jens. Um, it's uh, we clearly have been spending a lot of time together, but it's definitely going through that phase at the moment. Is where we prototyping, we see what's working, and the whole thing about that is about creating feedback. We're wanting to create an environment where we're learning from feedback because we're not building on things that we think will work. We we're, we're building on things that we know that have worked or know that can work based on the real time feedback that we're getting from running experiments inside the playground or using data to inform decisions and things like that. Yeah, and and I think that's also important from a client perspective, it's like people who want to engage with the XYZ playground. It's I mean it's for both worlds. It's for young entrepreneurs and young thinkers who want to be part of that movement, and it's it's for for organization managers, uh, experienced leaders who want to be part of that. And I think what is what is rare in this times, and, and I see that always when I'm uh, in my other business, which is the coaching business, and, and focusing on helping companies building innovation cultures and change in their organization, everyone looks for the perfect solution. They want to get the silver or the gold bu- bullet almost. Um, straight away. And that's what they're used to working with large, successful consultants um, over the last, I don't know how many years, like 50, 100 years. Um, because consultants always use that, what they have learned from a lot of other organizations to give them the solution or as close as possible to the solution. I think that's also what we flipped around. And you guys do this in perfection is you're not using exact solutions for everyone it's you're you're using ways of thinking and help the client and help the other person to unleash the way of thinking and and finding a solution together and and then just this this playground of minds and and ways of thinking will help people and companies to think differently and then find the right solution for their environment for their problem and i think that's I still think it's rare in, 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 in the world where we are in, where everything is focused on cost reduction and, and, and profit, um, which I understand from a business perspective, that's important to have that structure. But I think it's everyone tries to find the right solution rather than finding the right questions to ask and finding ways of exploring things from different angles. That's why I think that's a huge opportunity for every company and leader inside of companies to engage with you guys to find out what what it is. Mm. Yeah, and I think, you know, Jens, that's a great point and sort of a segue in terms of just chatting about the name quickly and how we came about with naming the business. And it is exactly that is because you've got sort of three generations, generation X, generation Y and generation Z. And whichever way you look at it, it's how do we create a space where there's collaboration between all of those generations? Because, you know, I think, you know, going back to reverse mentorship quickly is a lot of people think when you say the word mentor is that you're asking someone to give you direction and to guide you around certain things. But mentor relationships and a lot of mentors out there will testify to this is that they've learned a lot from their mentees or the Mm. people that they've been mentoring as much as the knowledge that they've transferred into that space. And so while we are using a reverse mental model, we acknowledge that we've got a hell of a lot to learn from the leaders of today, um, because then we can, you know, learn from the leaders of today so that we can make better decisions going forward in the services that we're providing, but also in 
the world that we're looking to to contribute and change um, and things like that. And so, yeah, going back to the name quickly and just talking quickly about how that came about and why we feel it's important is inside the name, you've got three generations. How do we create an environment where there's one collaboration and there's a learning culture that's established? Um, and there's also a culture of experimentation um, because I think that, you know, we've done certain things in a way up until now. And Jens, you touched on it briefly in terms of the way that consultants have worked through the world and the skills and services that they've brought to the space. And that's sort of something that we're looking to shift and change up a bit, is that we're saying we don't, we might not have all the answers for you right now, but give us an opportunity to get into that space and craft and work with you to better understand what you um, what you're trying to solve and how you're going about it, because that then talks to the the arm of experimentation that I'm sure we'll get to in later conversations around how we're trying to build that out. Yeah, and I think you you mentioned one key word which is wayly underrated everywhere. It's relationship. Building a relationship in this context uh, without with knowing that there is no solution straight away. Um, I think it's also something which fascinates me from a business perspective because having this, it's basically if it's human relationships that build business relationships that build something that will change something in the in in the organization and both organizations which then change something with everyone who is connected to that organization. And that's for me a fascinating way of looking at it. How do we build better relationships? between businesses and people inside of businesses with, with the way of thinking of the XYZ playground. Because, I mean, you see it every day, or I at least see it every day, that this XYZ way of thinking, very, very senior people don't interact with very, very junior people because maybe of status, maybe there's no connection, maybe they have nothing to do with each other. And I know that some are seeking that, who are uh, very senior, but there's no direct connection. Or being in an organization which is very hierarchical, you, you don't dare to ask, let's say, in quotes, stupid questions to young young minds inside your own organization. And I think that's that, that's a perspective. How do you build relationships and learning, maybe prototyping that with you guys, um, finding out how that works and then replicating the same way of thinking inside the organization where do you empower young minds inside your own organization and taking that and building a relationship inside your own business, which then in re return creates a different culture, creates different opportunities, which drive the business forward. So it's, it's more for me, it's the whole thing is more a sustainable long-term perspective rather than a short-term fix. And that's, that's, I think, still fairly rare from a business perspective. Everyone goes towards the short thing and and try, trying to fix it as fast as possible rather than investing into the long term. Yeah, and that's a brilliant point. And I think the point that you raised about sustainability and relationships and the length of time. And I think that from a consultancy perspective, I think that sometimes where some of the thinking has been incorrect in the past is that they've gone in to fix or be have been brought in rather to fix and work with a specific team or a specific problem that they need to execute and fix on. And they've not necessarily adopted the, the thinking around what happens when I'm no longer there. And that's something that we've chatted about from the very beginning is how do we create a framework and a mindset that when we are no longer there, the work that we've been done or have done rather can still be continued and utilized inside of that organization. So I think it's just a different way of thinking about things um, and thinking about things potentially over a longer term perspective rather than just from a short term. Yeah. And and to that point, I think it's, it's not the fault of uh, consultants and consultancies because that's their business model. So I fully, fully get that understanding. And I think it's also they're not incentivized in doing that because the big corporations or any corporation is focused on getting as fast as possible to the result. So they're, they're, they, the consultants work 24-7 to make that result happen. And, and because they know everyone knows it takes long-term perspective to be able to fix it properly and finding the root course, but nobody wants to spend the time and the money. So that's just how it evolved over time that it's always about this quick fix and i think that's a bit what 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 we need to look into as well how how do you monetize that in different ways so that's not 
creating this addiction model where it's like, I try to spend as much time with you, dear client, because I, I'm earning with that. So it's how do you turn this around and and finding different ways of monetizing that, uh, is and we're not there yet. I think that's something we need to figure out with a client who is willing to to test that and find out how that works, um, mm. because I think that's that's will that is a, one of the possibilities of building a winning business model which works for both sides. Yeah, and that's a that's a great uh, great point again, Jens, in terms of the business model. And I think that that's something that we're looking to 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 test ourselves, to test our thinking, um, with regards to how we create and generate value for clients that we work with. And again, there's that word value. What are we? What are we actually? What is the service that we are offering? And how are we quantifying that value? Um, because in the past, different models have utilized different frameworks, whether it be time spent, uh, return on investment, those types of things. And I think that again, challenge our thinking, but also you know learn from feedback. And I think, you know, the point that you raised about finding a client or an institution that would like to sort of explore some of those things, that would be great. Um, mm -hmm. And we'd be willing to, again, look at how we can develop that relationship out. Yeah. So in, in case you're listening to this right now and saying, it's like, I would love to engage with this, folks, please reach out to Joshua. You can find him on LinkedIn or you, you check out the website xyzplayground.com. Um He's, he's, he's more than happy to chat and, and find out how, how the group can help you as well. Um, I think we have covered a lot today. Um, I would love to keep some things for the next um, episodes. We will do one episode now per week. At least that's the, our prototyping schedule. Where we try to give you an understanding of what the XYZ playground is, how is the, the thinking behind, and just keep you a little bit being part of the journey. Um, I, I think next time we will look into different topics just to get your understanding of what's happening and how young minds are working together. So I think maybe we even dig into how does it work in a, in a, in a, in a, in a setting where we have never met in person. So maybe that's also one of the interesting things we will cover next week. Definitely, Jens. And um, yeah, thanks for, thanks for agreeing to prototype and uh, always seeing <laughs> i know it's your preferred way of operating but yes. um yeah never, nevertheless thank you and uh yeah look forward to seeing where this prototype adventure goes um and seeing how we can add value and connect with uh, different people awesome thank you joshua and yeah everyone who is who is listening or watching please uh like and share this video or the audio version of it um, and find us in, in LinkedIn on any other social media platform and uh, we will get in touch. Take me to another place where the fairy tales will end. Magic, magical land, magic, magical land. To another place where the fairy tales will end. Magic, 